Good morning, good morning. It's Monday 31st of January, so it's the last day of the month, which is certainly important, uh, although it's the first day of the week. Uh, the first day of the week, which has the uh, non-farm payroll release on Friday. So maybe a little bit quieter this week as we wait for that number. Obviously, interest rates are such a big focus at the moment with the Fed talking about higher rates in March. So the uh, jobs report will be very closely monitored on Friday. Um, with that in mind, let's have a look at, uh, I'm going to cover some commodities today, some Forex and also some stocks to try, quite, try and give you quite a broad, a broad outlook as we start the week. Um, I'm starting off with WTI crude. Now, this is the... Uh, Slight, there is a slight concern here for bulls in that we're very, very overbought. We've been overbought for quite a while. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. Certainly doesn't mean that you should be selling into a short position just because the market has become overbought in a very strong bull trend. Definitely would not advise that. But what I can say is that candlestick wise, we've got a couple of dojis here um, where the market has closed unchanged. The market's traded up, the market's traded down uh, and closed unchanged. And that's more of a neutral candle than anything else. Not particularly negative, but what it does indicate is maybe the market's running out of steam and we need to consolidate in oil, trade sideways, dip a little bit maybe to a support level. Not Nothing serious. I certainly wouldn't be looking for a short position, but um, I just wouldn't be surprised to see this market trade sideways a little bit. Even when we look at the four hour chart, we've got a bearish engulfing candle here, bearish engulfing candle here. So slightly more negative on the four hour chart, but not enough for me to want to get into a short position. But if I was long, I'd certainly be lightening up. Uh, and waiting to see what happens. Sticking with commodities, gold is usually a favourite market of mine. However, it's been a real struggle to get any decent trade opportunities or, or recognise any decent levels that I would be trading uh, because, as I've said to you before, uh, it's just trading sideways. You, d you don't even have to look at the price. Just look at the moving averages. The 50, the 100, the 200 day moving averages, all just flatlining and converging, which is just a very clear indication that this is in definitely a sideways trend. However, we have managed to um, get a couple of winners on this and some big winners too. We managed to sell at the upper trend line here in the low 1850 area. Uh, the longs are around 1800, 1805, 1800 didn't work, but reversing into a short position does appear to be working. Let's just have a quick look at the four hour chart. Uh, you can see we're consolidating, but I don't think this is a base building exercise. So I think that we probably will hold below 1800 and head south during the week in gold. Uh, let's move on to the stock markets. S&P, probably my favorite uh, stock market to trade and some good levels, uh, I, I would say here. So uh, the market sold off as as expected, completed the head and shoulders pattern, um, went to went to a couple of targets. We've bounced back quite strongly, but we definitely have strong resistance around the 4440, uh, 4450 area, and that held every single day of the bounce last week. So clearly that's working. It's a Fibonacci level, short term, it's a longer term Fibonacci level, it's a moving average at resistance level. So it's absolutely key. Now I think we'll probably turn lower. I think that we've paused and we have consolidated because the market got oversold and the market is not used to being in oversold territory in a bull market. So you can imagine that bulls are down there thinking, well, every time I bought when the market's been oversold before, it's worked and the market's absolutely roared back. Well, in this case, it hasn't really roared back. It's only really got to the second fib level and it's stalled. So this to me is a little bit of a sign of weakness that we're not getting the usual strong bounce back. For example, you know, the market got oversold here. Look how we rallied back. Um, it didn't take long, did it? We're just not getting that here. OK, well, that's just my personal opinion. And I think the resistance levels will hold and I fancy moves to the downside. Uh, NASDAQ, similar sort of situation. Uh, we haven't bounced back as far as the 38.2% FIB here, uh, but we are seeing more of a consolidation in an oversold market. But again, here, the oversold conditions are easing now through this sideways consolidation. And when they ease enough, perhaps we'll start probing to the downside again. Um, US 30, the Dow Jones, um, similar sort of situation, got oversold, starting to recover, but not even getting up to the moving averages here. So I think that there is some underlying weakness in these US stock markets for now, at least. Uh, let's have a look at the Germany 40, the DAX. Managing a bounce, but as you can see, um, we are holding, well, we're holding the resistance levels that I've got in the reports. So I'm not going to go over them again, but, it, but moving average is certainly lending weight to those resistance levels. OK, let's move on to a little bit of uh, Forex. Now then, what was I going to look at? 
Aussie, New, Aussie and the New Zealand dollar were the main ones that uh, did well for us last week. We sold the break point and then ran shorts and they really did move. They really did hit all the targets. Seeing a bit of a bounce back today, which I think we'll have a look at on the four hour chart in the Aussie versus the US. Um, some weakness in the US dollar. But I think overall the US dollar will continue higher. It's certainly been had a, a strong uh, uh, theme to it with um, these higher interest rates that we're looking for in the US. Got to my resistance level today, which is mainly based on the short term 23.6% FIB at around 7050. So far, that seems to be holding, as you can see from this chart. However, the New Zealand dollar hasn't really got anywhere near my resistance levels yet. So whether that gets there or not, I don't know. Uh, one really interesting, uh, actually, the, the, let's have a look at the euro. Euro US dollars had a little bit of a bounce back as well. There is definitely underlying weakness in this one. We broke the break point here. If you remember at 113.00, we even had an opportunity to jump back into a short position on a bounce back to that level. And then the market dumped, hit my targets on the downside. And again, small bounce back today, but I really don't see this about lasting too long. Um, even the fact down to the fundamentals that the ECB are, are, in, are indicating that they're not going to put interest rates up. And clearly the Fed are. Surely that must give this pair quite a negative bias. Got very oversold, as you can see from the slow stochastic, uh, and that is now unwinding quite nicely, even though we haven't had much of a bounce back. So that is what happens to the slow stochastic. So that's on the four hour chart. Let's have a look at the daily chart, just entering oversold territory. But we're in a bear market here. This is different to the stock markets, which are in bull markets. When bull markets get oversold, they bounce back quite quickly. When bear markets get oversold, they can stay oversold for a long time and get more, you know, and the price can continue lower, even though we're significantly oversold. So um, I wouldn't be too concerned about that if you're if you're trading from the short side. I think I don't think that's something that you need to be uh, too concerned about. I don't think that can can trigger a huge bounce in this pair. Now, there's one other thing that I wanted to look at one other pair. It is the dollar yen. Um, this to me looks like it could be a head and shoulders pattern. Let me take some of these off. Talked about this head and shoulders pattern for quite a while. It's something I've been monitoring carefully, and we do still potentially have something uh, left shoulder here, head. Now, this right shoulder is a more, um, um, uh, what am I trying to say? I, there is a greater chance that this will form now because look at this negative candle on Friday. Not a huge negative candle. We probed up. We closed lower on the day. We didn't even get halfway down the green candle. So it's not, not certainly not a sell signal that I would want to be short on, but it maybe is a warning that this shoulder might start to form. Again, with head and shoulders patterns, you wait until we've broken the neckline because until it's only then that the pattern has been confirmed for your sell signal. And at the moment, that trend line is hovering around 114.00. So we'd have to go down 150 pips before we even got there. So it's something that I'm monitoring. You can keep an eye on it too, but this is not something, we're not at the stage at which you would want to trade this pattern yet. Okay, um, hope that's helpful. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions. Uh, always look forward to your comments. Uh, thanks very much indeed. We'll chat again tomorrow.